Good morning. Hey, Steve. How you doing, buddy? Morning. Morning. I am doing fine. Good, good. Morning. Good. Now, for everybody that's listening, oh, by the way, we're on the air. Uh, this is Dave in the morning. Yeah. And uh, on uh, the line with us is our favorite state rep, our rapping rep, Steve. Uh, and is it Reich? Is that how you say it? Yes. See, I knew it. See, yeah, I'm, I'm sure smart. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that, now a little birdie told me that you've been listening to the show. I have been. When I get up in the morning and hit the computer, uh, there's always a Facebook message that uh, Dave in the morning is on. And uh, usually, I, you know, if I'm not doing something on the phone myself, I, I check in and see what you guys are up to. Well, I appreciate that, buddy. And but Usually you... it's no good. You've been busy, man. I know a lot of things are going on here. Um, I'm actually on your on your email uh, blast whenever something's going on uh, in uh, in, in uh, your office with things that you're doing, which you do quite a bit. Uh, we used to get a little notice of uh, of what's happening. We try to share it with our listeners. So now, Steve, this is the first time you've been on the show with this year. Hopefully, not the last. Um, but you are uh, you are a state rep and uh, serving. Now you serve a pretty good size area. So let's talk about that first. What areas do you serve? Uh, the 63rd District, which is entirely within McHenry County and encompasses pretty much the northwest three quarters geographically okay. of, uh, of McHenry County. Uh, I do not uh, have none to Algonquin uh, townships or um, um, the, the townships down in the southeast corner of the, uh, of the county, but other than that, I represent uh, the, the most of the northwest three quarters of the county geographically got it okay so now explain to us uh exactly what does a state rep do right now a state rep is scrambling to see what he can do to keep the, the home fires burning in the 63rd district man um, that's a job <laughs> yeah it is um you know this thing came upon us quickly um we've had very little opportunity to respond uh, and, uh, you know, I think we're getting our feet under us now and, um, you know, I, I, there, there may be a light at the end of the tunnel that, uh, you know, we might start to see pretty soon. Right. And I know that, uh, you know, it's, it's so controversial too, because, you know, a lot of businesses, I don't know if you were listening earlier, but a lot of businesses, uh, were really looking toward the, to this May 1st opening. And then yesterday, as we all know, uh, the uh, governor, uh, Pritzker, has extended it now until the end of May. And I guess the biggest question that, that that's being asked out there is, uh, is it going to be extended again after that? Well, um, to be perfectly honest with you, there's an open question about the, um, the extension of this order. Um, it's, it, <clears throat> we're, we have yet not decided on, in our caucus or come up with an idea of exactly what that extension entails in terms of its legality because the statute speaks in terms of the governor's ability to issue an executive order for 30 days. It's silent as to his ability to extend it and there are those who think that since the original statute says 30 days uh, there has to be some involvement with the General Assembly in order for that to be extended. Otherwise why put a 30-day limitation in the original statute? Now, you, so, know, you know, it's really uh, funny, too, but, Steve. I brought that up this morning on the show. I brought that up earlier. I'm like, I'm like the law says 30 days. It doesn't <laughs> say 30 days and another 30 days and another 30 days. Now, I'm not saying that the governor doesn't have the right heart for this because, you know, it's a big deal. It's, it's on his back. So, you know, about doing this. But like you said, there is a question uh, uh, yeah. about his, his legality to be able to do that. And people are starting to speak yeah. out. You're like, well, hey, you know, so he can just decide to jump up and say, well, everybody stays home another month. And uh, that's well, where right the problem now, is. Right, right now, I will, say, I will say this. I think the governor has walked on the right side of a very thin line. Yes. And um, to the extent, <clears throat> excuse me, to the extent that I can, I will support what we're doing here because I, I think we're starting to see a pathway out of this. Uh, yesterday's order allowing uh, businesses to reopen uh, under under strict uh, social distancing uh, guidelines right. um, is a good first step. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, until.
until we until we come down uh, and until we have good statistics as to the full extent of the of, of this of this uh, infestation and um, our ability to see how it, it spreads, who it spreads to, and and all that. Um, you don't want to get you don't want to get into this and then find out you got to lock it down again. That would that would be even worse. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. you know it's uh, it's kind of cutting the baby in half. And at this point, we're watching what the governor is doing. We're uh, trying to the extent that we can to support what he is doing. Um, but you know, um, I listened to your interview with with Mayor Kelly and. Um, you said a lot of things that uh, you know that are on everybody's mind. Uh, you know, mayor, the, the mayor and the people in the city of Harvard and, and city council and in the school district and stuff. They've got some hard decisions to make here, and it's not made any easier by the uncertainty of what's coming out of Springfield. That's true. That is true. Um, so the most challenging thing right now is the emergency that we're dealing with, and as you probably heard the mayor say that you know that the budgets. Uh, are uh, are taking a real hit right now because not only are we not working, our folks are not working in our communities, but because there is no work and there is no sales tax and there is no revenue, uh, the coffers can I use that word coffers uh, in the in the budgets here are taking a big hit. Yeah, yeah, and they and they're going to continue to do so. Um, you know the um, you know governor gave guidelines out the other day about what the anticipated revenue hit for the state is going to be. Um, it's, uh, it's going to be profound. And we are going to, somewhere, somehow, we're going to have to craft the budget for twenty fiscal year 2021 within that, um, within the, the, the bounds of that profound uncertainty. And um, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. Difficult times. If not, nine near impossible. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, now, I, I think one of the questions, now one of our listeners uh, said something. He said, if everyone is required to stay 10 feet from each other and wear a mask in public, and restaurants are required to have only enough tables for, you know, like a six-foot safety distance, shouldn't they be able to go back to work? Again, uh, I'm reading your, your Facebook chat line as you're, as you're doing it, and um, I, I will say, you know, Ted, I... I sympathize with that with that notion. The restaurants are taking the biggest um, hit uh, right now, except for maybe schools, which are not in session and things like that. But as far as businesses are concerned, uh, restaurants are going to be um, they're going to be the, the bellwether as to when we we climb out of this. It's right. going to be the most difficult thing. Um, you know, I would like to see that happen, but I don't think we're there yet. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Um, let's let's start seeing some some trend lines that say that um, the, the transmission of this disease is in decline um, and hey you know I want to I want to go uh, out and eat myself just as much as anybody Man, I um, so much. but until yeah you know it's just it's it's difficult yeah yep that's true and and it, and it is you know there's no as one of the things I guess that this really gets us is this came out of pretty much nowhere I mean, you yeah. know, I mean, it, and and the, and it's so sneaky. It's a sneaky disease um, because you can get it and not know you have it. You can spread it and not know you're doing it. So it just makes it so much harder to, you know, what I'm saying, just to kind of take, you know, and then and then to to find a vaccine or or even to do treatments. It's very challenging. Right well. Now. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm actually I'm reading uh, John Barry's book, The Great Influenza, about the 1918 mm -hmm. um, uh, Spanish flu pandemic, and the parallels are pretty uh, are pretty uh, uh, striking, to be oh, honest yeah, with you. It's like a rerun. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, you know, and if there's any if there's anything that we take out of this, uh, maybe what it is. Uh, that we should be doing is planning for the next one because we've had two in the last ten years, two t different types of flu pop up. Uh, this one, this one is uh, is much more widespread and much more deadly. It appears, hmm. but this isn't the first, and it probably won't be the last. That's true. That's true. So we just got to kind of get ourselves ready for that kind of stuff. 
I do believe we do, yeah. And it's our job as, you know, um, it's our job to um, figure out how to do that preparation, how to do it in a way that uh, uh, makes sure that all communities are, are, are taken care of. You know, Harvard is, um, Harvard has different needs, Harvard has different pressures than the city of Chicago, but they're no less critical. Right, right, right. Um, interesting, too. Now, in, in, with the, are you getting a lot of um, input from your constituents about the, about the, you know, what they think you should do or what they think, how they think you should approach this, you know, from the, you know, from the representative standpoint? There, I'm getting a lot of emails and calls. And by the way, my office, uh, I'll take this moment to plug my office, which is not open to walk-in traffic, but is open. Uh, during business hours for, for, for phone and email. And um, I, I strongly urge people if they do have issues to give my office a call and whatever the state, you know, we can do in terms of providing state services, we will do that. But yeah, I'm getting a lot of those kinds of, uh, those kinds of calls. The question, the biggest question that I'm getting is why can't we do something to make this faster? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first one being, um, we're all in a new world here, and we are treading lightly so we don't, you know, mess this up and end up back in the same place we were back in March. Mm -hmm. The second one, frankly, is that, um, you know, the governor is basically uh, calling the shots, and, um, you know, we are doing our best to let him know the concerns of the um, of this district and um, other districts that uh, aren't represented by members of his party, shall we say? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's it's difficult when you're sitting here, um, basically on the outside looking in, and are you know just just based on the, the realities of, of how things work in Illinois. Right, right. Um, I guess yeah. Ted also uh, got on there. He said. Uh, that he was con uh, concerned about mom and pop restaurants, um, that they're not going to make it. And, and I, that's what I was talking about earlier, earlier today, because with this extra 30 days, I mean, you know, it could be, it could be devastating for the small businesses yeah. that they're trying to save. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm sympathetic to that. I absolutely agree with that. Um, we apparently have a new uh, tranche of money coming out from the federal government uh, with regard to um, the, the, the PPP loans and things like that. I urge anybody who has got a uh, restaurant that they're, um, uh, you know, uh, that any restaurant or any small business, to be honest with you, right. uh, get into your bank and anticipate the issuance of this money and be ready to apply when uh, when the money becomes available, um, local banks are open to do this. I know that my bank, uh, Harvard Savings Bank, which is part of the state bank group, is uh, is a lender under the um, <clears throat> under that program. And um, you know, uh, forewarned is forearmed. Yeah. Be be prepared to to make that application as soon as you possibly can. Gotcha. Okay, so if they need to get a hold of you, Steve, what's the phone number in the, the email that they can get a hold of you guys? Area code 815-880-5340 is my, tel is my office number. And Reich, R-E-I-C-K, at I-L-H-O-U-S-E-G-O-P dot O-R-G is my email address. Um, we, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of traffic as far as emails are concerned. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll plug my, uh, my uh, e-newsletter again, uh, like you say, you've subscribed to it. Yep. You can go to my, you can email, uh, you can go to my uh, email address, uh, sign up for the newsletter. And it's a good way to get information out to folks that, you know, uh, of what's going on uh, as far as state government is concerned. All right, great. All right, well, that's uh, Steve Wright, who is our state representative here for the McKinney County area, including Harvard here, where our radio station is. Steve, thank you so much for jumping on with us here today and uh, sharing that information. We're going to have you back, buddy. we got to have you back. I am happy to come on anytime, gentlemen. 